I am delighted to have Dr. Uh, Mickey Walters back. She's a good friend, and we just enjoy being together once in a while. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> the um, opportunity doesn't present itself too often because we're both busy. Um, I want to talk just a minute out of, um, you know, by way of introduction, that you and your husband founded uh, Faith Outreach Center in Tampa. How long ago? 27 years ago. 27 I, years ago. I remember. Ago. <laughs> I remember. Yes. And you have, you have a day school, right? We have an academy that goes from K3 to 12th grade. We have a college. And you have a, a theological, it's, it's a Bible college. Yes, it is. And it, now explain how it's in different parts of the world, because your husband's getting ready to go visit one of your schools in Korea? Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's, uh, he's headed to Korea. He and our uh, dean are headed over there to visit some of the colleges that we have that's affiliated with us. We have some all we have them all over the world. We have them uh, down in the Caribbean, South America, uh, Korea, China. So we have them all over the world. Yeah, it kind of got a little goosebump when you <laughs> started mentioning those because Jesus said, "This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached That's to exact, all nations." That's exactly right. And uh, you have to prepare those preachers. That's right. That's what you're doing. Well, we're preparing those preachers that are in their land. Yeah. See, when you send people, it's wonderful, but when you prepare them mm -hmm. that are the natives of that land, they'll receive. They'll receive yeah. from their own. Call them indigenous churches, too. There you go. Yeah. It's not an attempt to go Americanize people. It's, you just no, give them not, the not at all. Not at all. It's to preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. and that's, that's everywhere. <laughs> now, were you into finances before you were saved? Oh, very definitely yeah. I was. I was a financial advisor, tax consultant, and uh, practiced before the IRS. So you, you just didn't Because <laughs> <laughs> she's a preacher's wife, she thought she might write a book about finances. No, there you, you go. You are qualified. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, you are qualified. Uh, so were you a broker? No, I was mm -hmm. not a broker. Mm -hmm. No, not at all. Um, I was uh, prepared. In other words, my object was this, to save as much money for my client as I could possibly save. Well, I bet that's a, a rare breed today. Yes. <laughs> from, from what I hear, you know, they try to sell, you in the, they call them instruments, you know, mm -hmm. uh, where the broker makes a pretty good commission. Right. But that's, that wasn't my object. My object was to help people save as much money as they can because that's my passion. My passion is for people to be able to save as much money as they can. My passion is to get people debt free. And we live mm -hmm. in a generation right now that it is not debt free. They don't even know what it is. They have no there. idea. They just want, this generation just wants to have and uh, have the commodities, for instance, that their parents had mm -hmm. that took them 30 years to mm -hmm. accumulate. And they don't want to wait that long. And you know, Mickey, so often you see young people getting married, whoever, starting out with what their parents had. The only difference is they're hawked up to here and That's right. uh, setting themselves up for marriage problems. Now, another thing, um, your church doesn't have 20,000 people in it, but it's completely debt free, right? Our, Every, our complex is completely debt free free. We don't owe a cent. As a matter of fact, what I, tell, I told our controller, uh, Gabrielle, Gabrielle was on the show right. here, Gabrielle takes care of the money of all the different facets of it. And I say this, on Friday, I want every bill paid that comes in this place. When people come in those doors on Sunday, we are totally debt free. We don't owe one cent to anybody. <laughs> That's a reason to rejoice, isn't it? It certainly hey, is. We dance, sleep yeah. good at night. <laughs> yeah. And it's, that's the way the house of God should be. That's right. That's right. And we should be the example for that congregation that if this church is mm -hmm. debt-free, they can accomplish it too. Yeah, and when, when the needs arise, that's right. Uh, you have a storehouse. Yes, we do. Yeah. Yes, we do. We have what we call a benevolent fund. Mm -hmm. 
and that benevolent fund helps those because there are from time to time mm -hmm. things happen mm -hmm. I oh, mean yeah. you know uh, this generation never thought we would be in the position that we've been in for the past three and a half four mm -hmm. years they they had no idea they didn't know what was coming down the pike and it happened and all of a sudden what is it what what's taking place yeah and and America's getting older and uh, we already know that Social Security is broke and those kind of things. But um, amazingly, the people who are right at the door of retirement, they got nothing. So it's pretty sad. Uh, now, why did you write the book? I wrote the book simply for the fact that I wanted to communicate in an everyday language, not with a lot of figures and a lot of, you know, hype stuff out there. I wanted somebody to be able to read this book that is debt free mm -hmm. and be able to read it, accomplish what the book says and take them step by step by step. And when, when they can do that and when they can discipline themselves to accomplish what was mm -hmm. in that book, they'll be mm -hmm. debt free. Uh, for instance, on page um, 61, she has the Ten Commandments of Wise Stewardship. Yes. I mean, the information you need is, is really in here. Um, you said in your book to develop a plan for a year. And um, I have to admit, I laughed. <laughs> <laughs> Most people don't know what they spend on lunch that day. That's true. That's true. See, I believe you have to have a vision for your money. Mm -hmm. You have a vision for everything else. I want to have a new house. I want to have a new car. I want to get this furniture. I want to get this flat that's screen. Good, Mickey, that's you know, good. Uh, they have a vision for everything else, but they don't have a vision for their money. Mm -hmm. And when we have a vision for our money and we let God into that vision mm -hmm. that we have, you know, it can be accomplished. Absolutely. Uh, now, we're in a uh, bad real estate market, I'm, or maybe it's just how you look at it, because homes that were $280,000 just a few months ago are now under 150, right? That's very true. So that's the good for the people who want to buy. It's bad for the people who paid 280. Th this is where if you have money right now, you can make money. Yeah, yeah. In real estate, yeah. really, you really can. In real estate right now, as a matter of fact, see, real estate um, went so sour because so many houses were upside down. I just heard the statistic this morning. 50% of Pasco County, those that live in the Tampa Bay area mm -hmm. know where Pasco County is, 50% of the houses that have mortgages are upside down. That means they owe more money mm -hmm. than what they can get on those homes so right now. So what can that person do? <laughs> They're just stuck. Just, just hold on. That's it. No, the, the, the point is, yes, hold on. Don't get panicky, but hold on. Uh, but because the housing market is going to pick up, but when it'll pick up is after the foreclosures that are out there. You see them everywhere, right. signs everywhere about the foreclosures. When those foreclosures start to become purchased and they're trying to do them, they're even bringing the foreclosures down. And when that is accomplished, well, start creeping back up. you're going to start seeing housing creeping back up. There's a few subdivisions and things like that that are coming up, mm -hmm. but they're reasonable for people to buy. You have a chapter in here titled, Why Am I in Debt? Yes. Uh, does that force you to take a good look at uh, at your expenditures? Because I think some people so live from paycheck to paycheck. They do. They don't realize, as the Bible would say, the little foxes spoil the vine. That is correct. I have in the book and also in the workbook that I have at the seminars that I do, I have a survey of your spending habits. Why am I in debt? And uh, some of the questions I ask is, uh, most of my spending is done how? Is it done by cash? Is it done by check, credit card, or debit card? Circling that, that's an indication, a good indication. 
When I use my credit card, I never change more than I can pay in full each month, and it, and it goes on. So you can take this survey and you can find, yeah. okay, where am I and what do I have to change? What lifestyle do I have to change if I'm going to get out of debt? And there's something about seeing it in black and white. You can yes, look it right is. there with your checklist. Let me remind you, if you just tuned in, I'm talking with uh, Dr. Mickey L. Walters, who wrote uh, Financial Freedom. The information's on your screen right now. And I've got this book available for you. That's 19.95 plus uh, shipping and handling. And if you use your credit card, it's 1-800-229-0059, or write to us at Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, uh, 33758. Now you also have um, a plan how to get out of credit card debt. Yes. Which is a huge problem. Uh, a credit card debt is a huge problem because people it's so easy to pull that little piece of plastic mm -hmm. out it's not like pulling out a ten dollar bill mm -hmm. if you know that uh, you can spend money on a little piece of plastic you're going to to do it and it's much easier than uh, spending it and with cash you think twice about the Oh yeah, Turn absolutely. Turn a ten dollar bill. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Do you know I've I've never used uh, an ATM in my life. No, oh, me no. neither. I I tell you. So don't anybody think you can hold me up and take me to an ATM machine? Because <laughs> I don't have a, I don't have a card. Uh, no, I I use two credit cards, and the only reason is it's good bookkeeping. That's correct. And I pay them off. Every I pay them off the day I get them. And so in that sense, I use the credit card company. They don't use me. That's exactly right, and that's the smart way of doing it. Let it work for you. You don't work for it. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, Arthelene, uh, nowadays you can get mileage, you can give gift cards, you can get all sorts mm -hmm. of things by using a credit card. But I've seen some people that have credit cards and they can bounce them like a yo-yo because <laughs> they've got so many of them, you know. Uh -huh. And they're robbing Peter to pay Paul, and before you know it, they're twenty, thirty thousand dollars in debt with yeah. credit cards. Yeah, and then try to figure out what in the world did I buy? Yes, that's it. Uh, now I, I understand people, and my heart goes out. A medical emergency, you can put on a credit card, and uh, that that's the only means you have. I'd do the same thing. I'm sure I would, but um, that's not the number one reason that people are in credit card debt is because all. of those kinds of emergencies. It's because I want this and I want mm -hmm. that. <laughs> uh, money is mentioned in the Bible more than 2,000 times. That's right. That's Boy, exactly that really makes that. you stop and think. Well, see, God knew. <laughs> he knew how important it would be to That's us. That's right. Exactly right. He knew what was going to happen, and he knew how money governs this world. Mm -hmm. People will kill for money. Yeah, people will do things that they normally think I would never do that. They'll do it for money. And so money has power and the devil knows it. Mm -hmm. So one of the biggest tools in the toolbox of the devil is mm -hmm. money mm -hmm. and being in debt. Yeah, because uh, you call it uh, you call it a tool of the enemy. I call it slavery. Mm, that's good. I, I really believe that people who are so deeply in debt uh, are slaves to it. When the truth is, you know, barring very unusual circumstances, you can begin to chip, chip, chip away from that, and you you'll experience that gradual freedom. There's a couple things I don't want to miss. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, she has in here percentages. Thirty-eight percent would be for housing. Correct. Of your income, and that would be utilities, insurance, taxes, everything. Right. This is a good. This is a good guide. You, you need to get this book. Ten percent for groceries. Mm -hmm. uh, five percent for clothing. Mm -hmm. And uh, two percent for recreation. That, that kind of covers, except the big extenuating circumstances. So someone could look at their, not necessarily the paycheck. If they just looked at their credit card bill. They could, they could match that up against your percentages here and see what's going on. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I'm not against credit cards. I mean, I'm against having a slew of credit cards. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe in having one or two credit cards. 
and let, as I said, let them work for you. And there's such a great accountability. I went back on mine and went right down the line, uh, you know, as to what I spent here, what I spent there. And I try to put everything on a credit card just yeah, for accountability. It for you. That's exactly it tells right. You what you bought, when you bought it. Um, one thing we cannot uh, go off the air without talking about that all important aspect of giving. Friends, Absolutely. it works. I've been a giver all of my life. And I look back and see how God has met my needs in abundan abundance. And I was left with two teenagers, and they both got through college. I've always had decent cars, uh, a good place to live. There you go. And according to this world standards, I'm not really that educated and a you know, have the ability to make a lot of money, but you cannot take that ingredient of giving out of your finances. You cannot. You cannot because tithing, tithing is the key to financial freedom. Mm -hmm. And I can't say that uh, too much. Giving is the key to financial freedom. Number one, you can't outgive God. Mm -hmm. There's no way to outgive God. And God is the ultimate giver when he gave us Jesus yes, Christ. Absolutely. He was yeah. the ultimate giver. I want to put your uh, website up. There it is one more time before we uh, have to leave the air. And again, remind any church leaders who are watching that this lady has a wonderful uh, seminar that she can give at your church. And... Uh, this is not only a, a fine, spirit-filled woman. She's had 35 years in finances. Uh, she was in this before she met the Lord. And so I've learned a long time ago that God never takes you through anything that he's going to waste. That's right. And all those years you were in that financial planning stuff, he was preparing you for the church. That's exactly the right. The saints of the church. That's exactly <coughs> right. And I, I believe that with all my heart. So... Um, this is a subject that comes up often on this program because it is so very, very important. It's, it's important to it um, everybody. Now, um, your book also talks about the possibility of refinancing a house. Yes. And how you can sometimes save money doing that. Absolutely. Absolutely. If, you know, if somebody gets the book, they can go through it step by step mm -hmm. to help them understand that uh, there are times that you refinance a mortgage, there's times that you don't. Mm -hmm. You have to shop. The key is mm -hmm. shopping. Whenever you're about to do something of that magnitude, start shopping mm -hmm. around. Because there's even comparative shopping even in uh, getting a mortgage mm -hmm. and making sure that your percentages are down. You've got to be down at least 2% for it to do you any good. Mm -hmm. uh, we are just about out of time, but I think the first thing you said is so important. That what is your vision for your money? I, I wish I'd had that term a whole lot younger because we plan, I think as Americans, a vacation. We spend more time planning a vacation That's right. than retirement, college, the, those things down the road. And so when you use that term vision, it really works. It does work. It does work. Uh, I really started our vision uh, probably when we were in our 30s. Mm -hmm. And I started making plans then. Wish I'd have been that smart. I wish I... <laughs> and, and that's another thing, friends. The Bible says I wouldn't have you to be ignorant. Now, he's talking about other things, but I think we could take that phrase out of context. He doesn't want you to be ignorant about money. And so this is your opportunity. I hope you'll take advantage of it. I hope also you'll join me next time remembering no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you.